All right, we're here with Beck, who is on our reception, and we're using her today because she is pregnant and has had her first little injury. Now, Beck is 22, 22 weeks, so she's mid of the second trimester, and this is sort of bang on about when people start getting problems like hers. Now, she's getting pain. Show us where your pain is, Beck. Okay, so sort of around that left hand side. Now, most people who have this sort of problem get an SIJ issue around about this time, and we're going to test that today. We've done a little bit of testing, and she's pretty sore at the moment, so we're just going to go careful on her. But her pain is sort of wrapping around her. Now, it's actually better today, isn't it? Yeah. Better today. It was really bad, but I'm going to show you what's going wrong with Beck on her movement. So, if you stand on your left leg for me, so standing on her left leg, if you drop that down. Drop your right dot leg down, yeah, and then lift up. So down into this position, yeah, and then lift up. And what's that like? It's so okay. So when she does a shear movement on that left hand side, is when they get problems. Now this is a classic one for after pregnancy as well, when mothers are carrying their baby on one hip, and they get a load problem through that SIJ. Now, if you on your back, for me back. Because she's only mid trimester, she can lie on her back for a period of time for us to assess it, that's okay, and she can do some exercises for us to assess it as well. So she just bends your knee up. Now, with Beck, what we're gonna test is what is happening with that SIJ on the left, okay? So with her, obviously, she's sick trimester, her pelvis is expanding, so her ligaments are starting to get a little bit loose, and I would say, it's a little bit of a combination. One, she's pregnant and her ligaments are getting loose, so she's pretty susceptible to getting an SIJ inflammatory problem going on. But two, what's happened with every pre-mum is her exercise has dropped down. So before, what we used to do? Squats, running. squats, lunges, running, doing weights, and now she's dropped all that and doing walking. So it's a combination of a little bit of deconditioning from not doing that, so she's losing all her glute strength. So she's got that going on, so she's dropping strength, and then her pelvis is changing and expanding and probably getting a little bit unstable. And it's usually on the one side you're usually weaker on, or the one side you lean on. And so we're gonna test that today. So not necessarily it's tight, it feels really stiff. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna put this under her sacrum, and I'm gonna give her an AP shear glide down into here, so it's going to be this way, and we're just going to have a look at the look on her face. You ready? Yes. There, there it is there. So I don't have to put too much pressure on, and what I'm feeling is that doesn't really want to move. There's a lot of resistance going on, so I'm not going to play around with that too much, but that's a definite positive little test for her SIJ, that when I do an AP glide, she's getting pain from it. And now I don't know whether that is stiff or unstable at the moment, it's really sore. And if she starts loosening up a little bit and it becomes really mobile, then we know it's unstable. Okay, it's probably that more than anything else because she's losing a bit of tone and a little bit of strength and she's increasing in her expansion of her power. So I'd say it's unstable. Feels stiff, but I'd say it's unstable. And we'll soon find that out. We might have to go to the point where she, if she gets too unstable, so she loosens up and her strength doesn't pick up enough, she'll have to wear something like an SIJ belt to increase that pelvic stability to make sure that joint doesn't get more and more and more inflamed as the weeks go on, okay? So with this, you'll see that she's lost a bit of range in her external rotation of her hip. So it's tied up already. We got that to 90 degrees before, and now it's just gone <laughs> stiff again. So this is why they have to be constantly stretching because her range in her hip was probably not so great anyway, but it's got really stiff. Now, the one stretch you can do to help relieve the SIJ problem on the left is do a glute stretch, but with a straight leg. Because she's pregnant, we don't want to lie on her back for too long, but what we definitely don't want her doing is going into a glute stretch where she goes into flexion, okay? So if she keeps her back nice and neutral, she can work on external rotation of the hip by putting both hands on the inside of her knee doing a classic glute external rotation hip stretch there. And I can just hold it there. <laughs> now she's got a look on her face, but that's not the SIJ pain, is it? That's just tight. That's just tight. Tight in the hip. So that's a relieving stretch for her. So she does enough of this, you'll actually get that thing moving and stop the guarding going on that I feel as stiffness. So when I get in there, 
it feels like a stiff, but it's guarding movement where the body is trying to lock down that side, which makes the whole thing more dysfunctional. She can't strengthen it, it gets sore and sore and sore. So loosening this up is going to be a really good way for her to then go and strengthen it, which will then stabilize it, which will then get less painful, and away she goes. So she can just put like her foot on the corner of a sofa or something in the gym, and she's holding there as long as she's pushing out, and you're okay with that. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, so that's a really good relieving stretch for her. Now, because she can't do that, I want it, I want that AP movement to be quite good. And I'll show you what I want you to do. If you have a standing in for me, what I want her working on is that's the first mobility for her hip. The second mobility is for the SIJ. So if you go up onto all fours like you were before, so jump up on that bed for me. So she goes, because it's her left hand side, right? She wants her left knee on the bed holding to here. Now you can do at home, you can just do this in your own bed or own sofa, or if you're um, in the gym, you can hold on a bench. What she's gonna do is she's gonna do a movement where she drops her right leg down, so drop that down from the back here. So she's trying to open up and stretch the left-hand side. She also gives that glute a bit of a stretch. Here we go there. Yep. yep, and then she lifts this right-hand side up to the ceiling, which means she uses her left glute med and the rest of the glute on the left hand side is a contraction, which is a bit of strengthening, a bit of activation. And then drops down, slowly drops down, and to the point where she's got a bit of gravity going here to stretch and open up this left hand side, which is like me when I jumped up and down on that knee when she was on her back, but there's no massive load going through there like I produced. Okay, and then up again. So she'd do a bit of a stretch coming up, hold it for two or three seconds, and then slowly down and really drop that down into there. Bit of a deep stretch, you okay with that? Yeah. And up again, and I do about sort of two to three sets of 10 to open up that left hand side and loosen up as part of a mobility to try and improve what's going on there. And then she works on her strength. Okay, so there's two things that we're gonna get, we're working on. Clams is one and bridges is another because she can still do bridges because she's only second trimester. Okay, go on to your right hand side for me though. So her clams need to be done on, on the side line. So she's got to get her external rotation strength up, okay? Admittedly, it wasn't that great to start with, and this is quite common. So if you're going into your pregnancy with your glutes, like your history really didn't, your glutes weren't amazing as far as getting them activated. So she could do squats and lunges and, and runs and all that stuff, but it, she always had her glutes weren't quite fully you know, activated. And then, of course, when you go into pregnancy, that is the first thing that comes comes out of the four. So, with her clams, remember, the best thing she can do is try and push her heels together, like you're squeezing a credit card between her heels, which you get a little bit of pre-firing here. She's just gonna make sure that she maintains that pelvis does not move around. So she's gotta try and keep a little bit of tone in her core, okay, just to try and keep that pelvis solid. And in, not worrying too much about raising the knee up okay she needs to focus on <coughs> excuse me squeezing through here and clenching her butt cheek is that okay yeah. now can you squeeze it hard enough to let that knee come up yeah. and holding it there and then slowly lowering it down but as she lowers not letting that buttock go trying to squeeze it on as long as it doesn't bring on a massive amount of pain that's not really too sore does it hurt that yeah. try again does it bring on that hip pain though a tiny bit. A tiny bit. So a little bit's okay, not a massive amount, because she is weak and sore in there, so it will run a little bit, as long as when she gets through her second, third set, it's actually getting less and she feels better when she's standing up. So that's a really important one for her. Once she gets some activation there, the pain drops down a little bit, maybe in a week's time, she can add a band to advance that. But I wouldn't put the band on just yet until we get enough activation going through and enough drop in sort of pain Otherwise, we're probably just going to flare that up. Okay, cool. Man. Okay, go on your back. And then you're her second little exercise to try and improve her SIJ and get her glutes going as bridges, of course. Now, this one you can put a band on straight away. So the band would go around either knees or on the thighs. So she is pulling out. Now, when you're pulling out, of course, you're going to switch on more glute, get some more external rotation torque, which is what we want. And as I said, she's in a second trimester, she can lie on her back, pregnancy like that, that is fine, as long as she's not there you know, for half an hour, she's just going to do three sets to ten and then get up again, there's no problems. The trick with this one though, is making sure she doesn't do any movement in her back, like all glute bridges, we're going to try and keep the stability 
and the spine and the movement and the hips. Okay, and to try and get her glutes going, she's got to think about pushing her heels down. So drive your heels down for me, back. And then when she comes up, then she squares her butt cheeks together to try and get that stability through that SIJ, switch your glutes on, and then come down again. And the whole time, those knees, to stay, knees, knees need to stay parallel. That's why it's good having the band to keep pushing out against it. Okay, so use that when you're doing it. Try again for me, back. So hip hinging through there. And then when she comes down, she's got to keep the weight through the heels and try not let the butt buttock go too much. Go again for me, feel okay with that? Not too sore, it's a hurt a bit. It's okay. So she can do pain free exercise, which is great. Okay, and this is the one way of really getting those muscles working and doing something for that region to try and improve it without trying to have to go and do squats and lunges and that sort of thing, which is probably just going to make it worse at the moment. Okay, go again. So I do sort of you know two or three sets of ten, then you get up and reassess it and see how her walking's going. Okay. And by the time she's done a little bit of that, hopefully over the next week she's a little bit looser through that joint and we can test it in progress forward. The other thing I need to show you as well is she's also got pain into extension, which is a bit of a complication because we don't really know whether this is a lower back disky problem as well or whether she's just gone into a lot of muscle spasm because of the sacroiliac joint pain. So if you show me your extension from the back, so if you watch this, she can only sort of go back that far and she doesn't really like it. The other thing too about what Beck does is she tends to shear, so when she goes back she sort of shears backwards, like she sort of almost shears backwards, so her movement is not sort of extension, it's almost like a little bit of shearing into extension. So you just show me that again for me Beck. Yeah, she sort of just sort of hinges and slides back on that point, which is going to jam it a bit. Just try when you go head back what happens. Yeah, she just stops at a point. Now, we're going to keep an eye on that and make sure that extension does improve over time. And we might have to do a little bit of soft tissue work and release work to help with that. But it's something that needs to improve over time because otherwise if she keeps, you know, not being able to extend, she's going to have problems further down the track. We might get the SIJ problem right, but we've also got to make sure that this clears up as well. If it doesn't, it's something we're going to have to reassess. We'll see you next time.